It's confirmed, Nico Hulkenberg is returning to Sauber and then Audi. But why is Carlos constantly stalling? What's keeping him from signing on the dotted line? And uh, also, uh, sorry, Valtteri and Joe, uh, probably not a good day for you. So the news broke today that Nico Hulkenberg is to leave Haas and move back to Sauber for 2025 on another one of those multi-year deals. Of course Nico would go to Sauber and then Audi. He's German. This means that Nico could still be in Formula 1 when he's pushing 40. That's becoming a much more common situation with the likes of Lewis and Fernando staying until they're 40. But this is a kind of assuredness and long-term commitment that Nico's not really had in a long time. Not even really at Renault. Now, it's quite clear that Sauber and Andreas Seidel, the now CEO of the Sauber Audi Group, really want Nico. And that's something I've been extolling in many videos, that sometimes a team that really wants you over skill, skill may not be the highest priority, but they want to work with you. That can be really important in making a contract happen. And Nico wants to work with them. This is probably one of the best deals that Audi could have come up with in terms of being taken seriously when it comes to the future of Formula One and them as also a power unit supplier. Yes, it's not a high flying front runner who can really lead the team, but if you really want a strong, dependable pair of hands that really showed their stuff with Haas last year when it looked really clear that they were the last team in terms of speed and pace, gave them some sort of hope and even scored them some good points on occasion, even though Kevin scored more often, you've got a really good selection with the likes of Nico. Now you just need to cap it off with an even better driver. Or if it doesn't happen, then Hulk can be a leader, I suppose, as he has with us. And yes, I know you're going to point the finger at me and say, well, last week you made a video about Nico and how he should go to Aston Martin instead of Audi. Well, that's very true. But at the same time, it was sort of a bit of a pie in the sky bit of thinking. Aston Martin would be great because they have the Honda commitment, the Aranco commitment. It's all looking really positive for Aston Martin, but there is a topic that we need to stroll toward and, uh, well, it's stroll. Put simply, Andreas Seidel wants Nico. They've worked together in the past when Hulkenberg did his part in securing a Le Mans victory for Porsche nearly a decade ago. Not many people remember that, but Nico knows what it's like to be on the podium. He has won stuff in the past, believe me. He's no stranger to the podium. It's just eluded him in Formula One. That, that's all. They're not picking a driver out of desperation thinking, oh, uh, okay, uh, who in the midfield isn't terrible? Uh, oh, he'll do. No, this is a clear, calculated decision. As Nico said, he really is excited for this opportunity and remembers his first time over at Sauber. This is from what he said. Ahem. I'm returning to the team I worked with back in 2013 and have fond memories of the strong team spirit in Switzerland. The prospect of competing for Audi is something very special. When a German manufacturer enters Formula 1 with such determination, it's a unique opportunity. To represent the factory team of such a car brand with a power unit made in Germany is a great honour for me. Yes, I know you're going to say, well, he worked for a factory team before with Renault. Yeah, that's very true. But now he's getting to do that all over again. He's in on the ground floor. They want him. He wants to work with them. That bond is as strong as it is at McLaren with Lando and Oscar Piastri. That is something that many teams would love to emulate and they are doing so over at Sauber with Nico. Right now with Bottas and Joe, you feel like it's a, uh, oh, okay, oh, oh, Valtteri's contracted and Joe's a, uh, fine. It's a marriage of convenience, really. I know, I know, it's really cruel, especially what Zhou got to experience in Shanghai. That was incredibly wholesome, I will admit, but let's be real here. I'm pretty sure that Seidel didn't really want to pick Valtteri and Zhou on merit. He kind of inherited them. And I think Nico recognises that being the only German F1 driver presently in the sport is really going to be the case for the foreseeable future. It's a huge honour. And also, I'm really curious, if you're German and you're watching this video, does Nico going to Audi matter? Does it make you more interested in supporting Audi when they finally arrive in 2026? I'm really curious. Do comment. And come on, brass tacks. It's a no-brainer for Audi because Nico Holgerberg... He's dirt cheap! Supposedly, his salary at Haas is only 2 million a year, and I can't imagine that Audi needed to break the bank to secure his services and pay much more than that, especially on a seemingly long-term basis. All of this securing a future in the sport where Nico doesn't really have to worry about surviving for another season because he's in a really good relationship with a team that he's been with in the past and had really, really good experiences with, which of course gave him that near-podium experience in Korea in 2013. It could have been just that little bit higher, but hey, 
fourth place, that's still not too bad. And again, I mentioned that Aston Martin could have been better, but they're currently racing with one hand tied behind their back. And Salvo right now, yes, they are looking a bit embarrassing at the moment, but hopefully these are growing pains which will be rectified, that at least they're aware of it, they're trying to fix it, and this will hopefully dissipate over the months that follow. And by the time we get to next year, it might start looking a bit more solid. And then in 2026, it'll look even more solid as Audi really start to exert their influence. But we also need to acknowledge the Haas side of things. Let's be real here. We owe a lot to the likes of Haas that we still have the Hulk in the sport. As I mentioned in my previous video, Nico is probably one of the most amiable and liked drivers on the grid because he doesn't court controversy. Sure, you could describe him as plain and not really all that characterful, but he is. He's a nice guy. He's just there. He's relaxed, he's chilled, he's well assured, well adjusted, and just pleasant. When you think of him and you think about the Sauber deal, you just go, oh, good for him. You're proud of him. You're happy for him. And that's something that really needs to be remembered. And Haas has managed to make the most out of. And you really should be thanking Haas that, yeah, it did come at the expense of Mick Schumacher's time in Formula One. And that is something that I am really still a bit sore about. But you do have to acknowledge that this move in replacing Mick with Nico it wasn't a waste. It was worth it in trying to give Haas some hope and also give Nico a second chance. You can't be mad at Nico for abandoning Haas because he wasn't tied down after his second option year with them. And he clearly sees a better future with Audi than at Haas. Yes, Haas is pleasantly surprising the grid with their competence under Komatsu. Their scope isn't nearly as high as Audi's is. Audi is an international car making superpower. Whereas Haas, um, let's be polite, isn't. But one fact remains, Haas saved Nico's career, and he is very grateful for Gene and Gunther in giving him a chance to return after a very um, you know, patchy time of it over the previous couple of years, and managed to show that, hey, even in his late 30s, he's still got it. He hasn't lost his speed. Yeah, he is one of the older drivers on the grid, but he's just as talented, and that chance for a podium could still be there. And if it does happen, it will be one of the most joyous times in Formula One. Everyone will be happy for Nico. What does this mean for the rest of the grid in the silly season? Well, I think with one driver moving to another team, this has pretty much sewn up two slots on the grid because it's quite obvious that the Haas seat that Nico is vacating is going to be filled in with Oliver Behrman. Yes, I know, British biased Oliver Behrman, but yeah, come on. Haas has provided me with so much evidence saying that they want Oliver for next year. He's their reserve driver. They're sharing that duty with Ferrari. And Komatsu has said many times that Oliver is sensational. He admires what Oliver can do. And what we saw in Jeddah is something that they've seen in their FP1 sessions when he's worked together with that team. Oliver's Going to be doing six free practice one sessions this year for Haas. That is huge. It's clearly opening the door for Oliver at Haas and just saying, hey, make yourself at home, get used to the car. It's getting really better. And Kevin's here. He can provide you some information. And speaking of Kevin, this I think has given him a reprieve because let's also be real over the last couple of years nico has outshone kevin over 2023 and even this year kevin has looked pretty lost yes he's done his bit for the team and he's also had a second chance much like nico but he just really couldn't hold a candle to nico in some places and i think this has really given him a bit of a salvo and a chance to remain in formula one because komatsu might want to seek continuity he might want to just say, hey, I don't want to rock the boat entirely. Yes, we've lost Nico. We're bringing in Oliver, somebody we know. But we also want to have as a leader, Kevin, because he was a good mentor for Mick. He did the best he could. And he did provide hope for Haas in 2022 in a real transitional year. So maybe Komatsu has acknowledged that because he was there for it. So maybe he just might want to have that for 2025 and maybe just give him that one year contract boost and then weigh up his options for 2026. Unless other drivers become available or the Alpine drivers become available, maybe Ocon might see a better opportunity at Haas than at Alpine currently because, you know, contracts are up and Ocon and Gasly are available. So you never know. We might see a Frenchman partnering up with Behrman. Who knows? We do have to thank Haas for giving Nico a chance. A true fan favourite is now partnering up with Audi. We're all happy for Nico. And we're all happy for Audi for finally committing to the sport and just signing a driver which was incredibly obvious and incredibly wise decision. So with Audi sewing up Hulkenberg, surely this would be a sign to Carlos and other drivers that they're a really serious option. Well, 
that's the thing. I feel like what Carlos is doing now is starting to get old, and I really think he's really got to sign on the dotted line now. This is getting silly, all of the stalling. He needs to swallow his pride, quite frankly, and sign for them now. With Fernando Alonso, Max Verstappen, and Lewis Hamilton all set up at their respective operations for 2025, Carlos Sainz has become one of the biggest names on the grid without a contract for next season with of course Nico taking up the other seat. And if Carlos were to join the Audi operation, he and Nico would be reunited after their tenure as teammates back in 2018 and some of 2017. They worked pretty well together. There's that continuity. And also both drivers have worked under Seidel. And that continuity and also memory of working together is something that Seidel probably holds with great value. That knowledge is crucial when a team is being newly established, as is the case for Audi. Or it would be, if supposedly Audi have not been irritated by Carlos just dragging his heels, hoping for something better. Because yes, Salba this year don't look really all that flattering, and many people might be starting to get second thoughts. But now that Audi has committed to the project 100%, some reassurance for all drivers that they mean business Audi. This isn't going to be a 75-25 thing where they could sell off shares. No, they're taking the whole widget. The vestigial tail of Salba, which is currently in a very neon green and black guise, is going to be going away after over 30 years of service. According to many, Carlos is their first choice, but they're prepared to cut off ties with him if things take too long. There are other options who might be more willing to commit to the project. But that being said, they haven't really been overly aggressive. It's been mooted that they've had multiple deadlines between he and Carlos, which have elapsed and nothing's been really done. Carlos has not signed on the dotted line. They have been giving Carlos more and more time to make a decision, probably because of Science's management saying that he's got to make sure that he's getting a really good deal and he doesn't want to be intimidated because, as we've seen with Carlos, he doesn't like being intimidated, especially if it's Checo on the track. Ooh. But I think there comes a point when Carlos needs to just take a step back and look, you need to have skin in the game to remain relevant in Formula One. Even if it's not at a fantastic team, you're still in the sport. Nico was lucky to have bits and pieces of moments, especially in 2020, when people could be reminded, hey, Nico's a really good driver. If Carlos waits too long and then Audi goes, fine, we'll go somewhere else, it's going to leave Sainz completely and utterly without a seat. Sure, Mercedes might be there, but it's not really an optimal fit because the future is Antonelli, as Toto has constantly said, even though he's then not said, he just can't make up his mind, Toto. Carlos wouldn't really be a good fit there, even though George is open to any comer, honestly. Red Bull's not really an option either because Helmut Marco, if this is true, has been aware of the offers that Audi have been giving Carlos and they're not prepared Red Bull to match that. And yes, money may not be the main reason for Carlos going to Red Bull, but it's still there. There's still uneasiness about signing Carlos. Where else can he go? Because Ferraris aren't going to take him. Aston Martin has sewn up now because of Fernando. Audi seems like the most likely fit, unless Carlos then runs out of time and then he has to settle for, well, Haas or Williams. Yes, the order could easily change for 2026, but right now, it's not entirely clear. And this isn't a small fry deal either, according to Racing News 365. It doesn't only offer him a multi-year contract and a leadership position, but also a very lucrative contract as well as an opportunity to become an Audi brand ambassador for life, just like his father for the rallying department of that outfit. So it's not like Audi are just blindly saying, oh, Carlos, we want you because you're hot property. No, Audi want Carlos, because Seidel wants Carlos, for similar reasons as to they wanting Nico, because Seidel knows Carlos at McLaren. He knows what he's capable of because Carlos was a team leader at McLaren. Seidel's going, he was good when I was working in Woking, I want him now in Hinville as Audi starts to join the sport, but Carlos is just not wanting to bite just yet. But at the same time, maybe I can see why Carlos decides not to signs for them? Yeah, I know that was terrible, I'm sorry. For starters, Audi may have the cash and the patience and the steady research and development of working with Salba, but they've yet to make good on their current work relationship with the team, and the present drivers have started to lose their patience with the overall situation, with Bottas now making regular calls for improvements in the wake of the woeful mess of the pit stops and now their reliability. Maybe science is looking at that and thinking that might not change anytime soon. I might be just waiting around for a couple of seasons hoping they might be good and that might not even happen. He's then got to consider his options, but those options are fading fast because, as I said, Nico going over to Salva locks off two seats. Haas, Behrman, Magnussen. That seems quite obvious. Science may run out of time. And even though it infuriates me, Carlos stalling, 
I can see why he's doing that, because he's aware that he is hot property. He is the only Ferrari driver to have won since Silverstone 2022. That's a huge deal. No other non-Red Bull driver can say that, apart from maybe George. That's a major plus for Carlos in saying, well, you know, I am pretty, pretty desirable. His agent, also called Carlos, or Nyoro, also sees that other options are still possible. Ahem. Let's say it's an interesting period of time at the moment. The driver market has been all over the place lately, and I think we will see some movements in the upcoming weeks, but for the moment, the juggling continues. You can sleep well between China and Miami, don't worry. There'll be no big news at least coming from us. We're still playing the game, so we will see. Oh, it's all about the game, isn't it? Seriously, Carlos, this is no longer a game. Nico has signed on the dotted line, taking up one of those Salba seats. That's one less seat in the game. And by him playing the game, he could easily lose the game. And he could lose the game, as I said, to Esteban Ocon. Him supposedly being the favourite to join Audi before Carlos became available. Ooh, can you imagine if Esteban and Nico were teammates? You know, Hulkenberg partnering up with the guy who kicked him out initially of Formula 1 in 2019? <sighs> Awkward. In the words of science, he's quite ambivalent about his predicament. He says he's both tense and excited for the uncertainty of his future F1 career. Sure, he may be unemployed next year, but unlike many drivers, he is in demand, and that means the ball is very much in his court. Many drivers this current year don't really have that luxury. They are going to have to convince their respective teams or other teams that they are worth taking a punt on for the future regulations of Formula 1. If Carlos did end up losing out and having to take a year out of Formula 1 to wait for more seats to become available, I really wouldn't feel sorry for him. Yes, I'm happy now people are starting to acknowledge his talents and what he could do, because for many years people will just be overlooking him. The cameras in 2019 would barely be taking footage of what Carlos was doing in the race itself. People would then be suddenly going, what? How did Carlos get fifth place in that McLaren? Whoa! Now people are recognizing him, but now he's starting to get a little bit too cocky. I really hope that he starts to think about his future more and just think, look, okay, Audi are looking quite good right now. They're giving me a really good solid position as the team leader. Maybe I should just take it and see what happens. If it doesn't work out, he's still young. He can maybe try again when more seats at the top become available. And if Max Verstappen does decide to leave Formula 1, he could maybe try at Red Bull again to become the team leader there, alongside maybe Liam Lawson or Yuki Tsunoda, I don't know. But it would be a good holding pattern, especially if Sauber do improve this season. They get over their gremlins and they do take that problem seriously and they start to maybe pick up some more points and be back in the hunt for maybe 6th or 7th or 8th place in the constructors instead of right now being currently uh, dead last. And I don't want Carlos to be seen as a joke because it's clear that he wants to be a team leader without any doubt and Audi can give that to him. And with them signing Nico today, it's one ambiguity sewn up. They signed a great support driver in Nico and he can be a team leader if he has to be, but I don't think Audi would really want that. They would rather have Carlos and Nico working together again and the CEO having drivers that he's worked with before, something that really many team principals and bosses of teams want. Just knowledge, because knowledge is power. As for Bottas and Joe, well, we all know that Audi has a huge presence in China, so maybe the cynic in us could see them keeping him for another year to milk the market alongside Nico. But I think Audi wouldn't do that because they are looking like they really want to be a serious Formula 1 team. And if they did keep Zhou Guan Yu over signing Carlos Sainz, it really wouldn't be a smart move, even though it would be a very, very lucrative move, because as we saw in Shanghai, the presence of Zhou Guan Yu in Formula 1 is huge. They sell that tickets within half an hour because of him. I really don't see Zhou staying there. Well, as for Bottas, well, he's been trying to convince Audi to keep him for that little bit longer, at least a couple more years, but it's not looking really likely. So maybe he might be good at teaching another young Formula One driver. Maybe he could go to Haas. Maybe Komatsu wants to make his mark more, really stamp his period of Haas by getting rid of Kevin entirely. Him being a remnant of Gunther Steiner, because Gunther was the one that got Kevin back in. So maybe he might want to have Bottas as part of his own era of that team alongside Behrman, because we got to remember, Bottas was really good in teaching Zhou Guan Yu the tricks of the trade. He was a really good team leader for him and made sure that Zhou did okay. He didn't fall flat on his face. We can't call Zhou Guan Yu terrible. We can call Zhou Guan Yu maybe fine, but Bottas probably saved him from being seen as a laughing stock. That's something, because really drivers shouldn't be seen as laughing stocks. But Carlos, please, 
really take this deal with Audi seriously. You can't wait much longer because otherwise other drivers will fill in that gap and you'll end up with no seat for next year. And that would be a crime. And Checo could find himself without a seat if he doesn't back down from his initial demands to stay with Red Bull after 2024. Something I discussed in this video here that you can go and watch next. He wants three years apparently. Three years? Ooh, he's got some balls, Checo.